Welcome to my home and welcome to my channel. This is me, Christoph Key, laughing through life, single, gay, and sober. This topic is about dating. Part one, first date. The quote for this topic is, when you know what you bring to the table, you're not afraid to eat alone. And that's by Tabitha Coffee's Bitch Camp. The topic of dating will be a consistent theme throughout my videos in the future. I do hope to find a forever partner, although I'm not actively searching for him right now. I do think it's important to be open to a possible connection if things do feel right. In this particular video, I'll be discussing my first date sober and all the feelings that came with it. It's definitely an interesting story and I learned a ton. <laughs> Like I've said in past videos, I didn't really dive into doing the self-work in sobriety until about eight months in. It was after a breakup and I had taken it really hard. I learned a lot from that relationship and I knew I needed some time alone before I even thought about dating again. In the program of AA, they say that you shouldn't date that first year of sobriety and I actually agree with them. What I learned is that I always put romantic relationships first in my life. That's a big problem. Before I even thought about dating again, I had to be comfortable being alone. That was something I definitely heard before, but didn't register until then. I spent months trying to figure out who I was again. I had to truly ask myself, what are my dreams with no guy included? It was not easy, but after doing a lot of soul searching, I had finally figured out what I wanted out of my life. I then thought about the traits and values I expected out of a future partner. I've been really lucky in the ex-boyfriend department and can truly say I care about all my exes. I've learned and grown from them, but where do I go from here? After thinking about it, I realized that the last time I dated, I was by no means sober. So this dating thing was gonna be something new. It was on a trip to San Diego with friends that I was somewhat thrust back into the dating pool. My friends, like myself in the past, are consistent with online dating, so they had made plans to meet up with a few guys on the trip. They encouraged me to do the same, and I reluctantly agreed. I soon matched with someone handsome that wanted to go out for a bite to eat. What's the harm, I thought. If anything, I could politely leave if I felt uncomfortable at any point. I told myself that this would be a practice date for the future. One thing about me is that I'm always trying to find the lesson in something. I believe that my higher power wouldn't put me in these sticky situations if I wasn't supposed to learn something. In most all of my videos, I'll be sharing with you those sticky situations. So, the time comes to meet up with this guy and I meet him out front of the address that he gave me. He pleasantly greeted me, nice looking, well-groomed, handsome, but a bit shy. But I thought that was cool because I love to talk. We walked to a nearby restaurant, got a table, and started friendly conversation. I found out that like my dad, he's a professional pianist and that really interested me. I was telling him a little bit about myself and my background when out of nowhere it hit me. This was the very first date I've ever been on sober. A wave of fear instantly rushed over my body, but with a quick glance in the mirror, I was easily calmed. Damn, I look good. I can actually have an intelligent conversation, still be funny, all while being sober, who knew? Why did I used to think that I needed at least three glasses of vodka just to feel this way? Meanwhile, my date has consumed three scotches and is definitely feeling a bit looser. Prior to meeting him, I did tell him that I was sober, but when I asked him what he likes to do for fun, his answer was cocaine. Well, it's quite obvious that we're not a match, but I figured I'd ride this one out. We leave the restaurant and head the same direction. Now here's where things get even stranger. He asked if I would like to come back to his place to see his one of a kind grand piano. And believe it or not, I do. Now I know what you're thinking, his grand piano, but it's not like that. By this time, I had made it completely clear that I was not interested in him romantically, but I did feel comfortable enough going upstairs and checking out his piano before heading out. Before we get to his extremely nice building, he gives me this disclaimer. Sorry if my place is a mess. I had a party last night. Great, I thought. This guy sure is a catch. We walked into his place, where in the middle of a loft-sized living room stood an exquisite grand piano, surrounded by empty truly cans. 
upon a closer look, I realized they were all the same flavor. Listen here, buddy. You can't fool me. You did not have a party last night. This is just how you live. He sits down, plays a quick song. It sounds amazing. And then offers me the bench so I can have a go. I play for a very short while. And then I'm ready to put my exit plan into action. I stand up, turn around and thank him for his hospitality. Let me walk you down, he says. As he grabs a plate of cocaine out of nowhere, snorts two lines and then offers me the plate and a hundred dollar bill. You know how time stands still in movies? It was just like that. The thoughts start to flood my mind. You are on vacation, right? Cocaine is an alcohol, right? You know what? I can do all this guy's coke all night and my friends won't even know. Why the hell not? As quickly as those thoughts came, they were defeated by the new man that I am today. Wait a minute, I thought. I'm out here in California exploring the possibilities of a new life. I am not gonna let this wreck of a person just come into my life and destroy all that I've worked so hard for. I also had this thought. As a performer working in the entertainment industry, there's gonna be sexier people and more enticing situations than this that I'll still have to say no to. If I can't say no now, what in the hell makes me think I can say no in the future? And that moment I realized that I knew how those drugs make me feel and I never want to feel that way again. Time unfroze and I replied with a laugh. You obviously haven't been listening to a thing I've been saying. I yelled, thanks again, as the door closed behind me. I will never forget that experience because I learned so much. I have to find the lesson, remember? The first thing that I got from that experience was realizing that I have a lot to bring to the table when it comes to dating. Looking in the mirror at that restaurant and realizing, hey, you're quite fucking dateable, was a boost of confidence that I really needed. It definitely made dating in the future seem less scary. The second is that even being faced with temptation and secrecy, my foundation in sobriety is strong. That situation affirmed for me that I'm truly ready to move and finally go chase my dreams. It's now time for a moment of gratitude. This week, I'm grateful for all those obstacles that help us realize our strength. I encourage you to ask, what's the lesson in challenging situations? See how you can grow, learn, and stand taller. Thanks for watching. Hang in there, and I hope to see you next week. This is me. Christoph Key. Do you like me? Then make sure to like and subscribe for more videos.